Dan, a very good morning to you. And we see there was this marathon meeting with Minister Pravin Gordon. Do we know what the outcome of that meeting was? Well, the outcome looks like was successful for four of the power stations to be back, put back on stream. And also we understand that meeting was very clear that a lot has to be done. There's going to be an in-depth technical audit to really find out what is causing most of the headaches that are besetting ESCOM's power generation capacity. And of course, we know that there's two big projects, partner, that have been on the go for some time now. ESCOM needs more billions of rands to fix what they call design issues, among others, in Kusile and Mudi, Midupi. Now, those were some of the issues that were discussed here yesterday. But the situation is not good at all. We've had President Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa, who's coming back today to the country from that AU summit in Addis Ababa, expressing his anger and frustration yesterday in Addis Ababa. Let's take a listen to that. Where we are now, we are almost in danger zone uh, in as far as uh, uh, energy generation is. And we've got to solve it. And uh, we've come up with a clear plan of how we can solve it. And to this end, we want to engage with everyone and say, let us sit down and talk about this uh, so that we are able to get over the challenges and the difficulties that we are having right now. And... So therefore, we are saying, let us look how we save ESCOM so that ESCOM continues to employ people, ESCOM continues to play the key role in the economy of our country. And in the end, this is a common problem. This is our problem, all of us. It's not a Cyril Ramaphosa problem. It's not a Praveen Gordon problem. It's our common problem. We've got to find solutions. And some of the solutions may be difficult and painful. Sometimes we need to grasp the nettle and say, to secure a better future, we've got to take this difficult path. Well, President Sri Maposa, they're not mincing his word, partner, expressing that frustration and anger and appealing to everybody to assist in resolving ESCOM's problems. Last night in that marathon meeting as well, ESCOM ending it with an appeal to all of us in South Africa to use electricity sparingly as they really try and resolve the challenges that they are facing. Now, the president is on his way back from Addis Ababa. He's arriving today. I understand that he's expecting a full comprehensive report today from ESCOM as to exactly what is going on and how some of those issues can be resolved for now to avoid stage four of load shedding. Now, I understand, partner, that yesterday, thanks to what is known as a national control system that's based in Jamestown in Ekuruleni, we were saved from a national blackout. And that's according to energy analyst Roger Lilly. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. For many years now, Eskom has deferred maintenance on power stations because they claim they don't have enough money uh, in order to, to do so. Um, and they have other, other reasons in terms of skill shortages and what have you. So, as I say, uh, when, when a particular power station is taken out of service in order to, to do maintenance on it, other power stations which should have been able to cope with the additional load because they have not been maintained properly start to collapse. And so you get this domino effect because now suddenly there's an additional one out of service. So that there's now a greater load shared by what's left and more and more of those start knocking down. And this is the problem because this could easily lead to, to a total countrywide blackout were it not for the fact that we have a very sophisticated national control system um, based in Germiston which controls this and prevents this from happening. And the way it does that is by simply switching off areas um, to, to keep what is still operation, operating operating. 
Well, questions remain on our minds as South Africans today, exactly how much of the truth we know. Is ESCOM really telling us the real picture? Last night, after that marathon meeting, Jabu Mabuza, the chairman of ESCOM, used words like, remain uncomfortable. But the situation is more dire, from what we understand, from analysts like Roger Lili Partner, than just being uncomfortable. And we know when there's load shedding, consumers like you and I get affected, Businesses as well suffer. Entrepreneurs on the ground who depend on ongoing power supply as well suffer a lot. And residents of Johannesburg were not pleased at all, as in other parts of the country. Now, our colleague Mobile Majala went up and about and spoke yesterday to some disappointed Johannesburg residents. There are dark days ahead for those who work from home and depend on power. I feel like with every other challenge that you face as an entrepreneur, I wish electricity didn't have to be one of them. It's so much bigger than just, oh, I can't charge my laptop. There are, oh, oh I can't go on Instagram. Um, a, a lot of my clients are nonverbal, so they use their iPads to communicate. And so if that iPad battery dies and no one else in the house can, like, you know, charge that, we can't have a productive session because your, form, your main form of communication has died. She's not the only one having to deal with unproductive days. In downtown Johannesburg, people on the streets are also feeling the impact on their own businesses. Yes, yes. Yeah, <laughs> you know what? I must go to vendor tomorrow, ne? For manifesto. too. So, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting here. Like, I must put the embroidery, I must do the embroidery, I must pray for my stock, you know. But now, it's job is dark. The rolling blackouts have hit a nerve. I imagine it's summer, not winter yet, but no electricity. It's because of the that first uh, president. You understand? So, and we don't know where he's staying. His family and him, they got solars or they got uh, generators. That's worrying, but I think it's also pushing us again to think carefully about how we ensure that we have a good state entity that's providing electricity. All powerless South Africans can do now is check their load shedding schedules and brace themselves. Mubile Madlala, Johannesburg. Well, those are the views on the ground of people like you and I and millions of other South Africans who were affected yesterday, partnered by stage four load shedding. Thankfully, we're over that for this morning. But there are bigger questions that we need to be asking. Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa and his government have been on a drive since last year to raise billions of rand for investment. Selling South Africa as recently as a few weeks ago in Davos in Switzerland as a destination for investment. And we need that money to really grow the economy, to reignite economy. Now, will this latest load shedding saga, or fourth, fourth stage load shedding saga, affect those prospects of getting investments? Has this put Spanner in the works? Our colleague, ENCA's Michael Apple, takes a look. Our electricity company, ESCOM, is in crisis. Causes the president made crisis. these remarks during the State and of the Nation address. At that point, the country was yet to experience load shedding this causes. year. That changed on Sunday as ESCOM implemented Stage 2 load shedding. And just after 7 on Monday morning, ESCOM spokesperson tweeted power plant breakdowns required Stage 2 blackouts once again be instituted. A mere six hours later, Kulupa Siwe again posts on social media saying stage four load shedding begins at one o'clock. Energy experts say this is completely unprecedented and stage four is uncharted territory. But ESCOM spokesperson insists we've been here before. We, we did uh, implement stage four of load shedding, I think it was uh, on the 6th of March in 2014, um, but then it was uh, under the broader definition of stage three. At the time, stage three was a shortage of between 3,000 and 4,000 megawatts. In a statement, the utility says it's unexpectedly lost six additional generating units. 4,000 megawatts now needs to be rotationally load shed nationally at any given time. South Africa's economy cannot run or grow by candlelight or generator. Security of energy supply 
in our country is an absolute imperative. Load shedding has an immense impact on the economy. This energy expert says 75 rand is lost per kilowatt hour, resulting in a staggering loss just for stage two. If we use this figure and calculate the cost to the economy for 13 hours a day of stage two load shedding, which is 2,000 megawatts, it comes to 2 billion rands per day. How did we get here? Simply put, the utility has for years not done the necessary maintenance on its plants. Also, substandard and defective work done at Madupi and Kusile is exacerbating the situation. Uh, over a period of nearly, say, six years or so of backlogs that we needed to have tackled. And this management and the board came when these things were there. But um, plans are underway to make sure that this hap uh, the, the, the maintenance happens. The utility says South Africans can expect an unstable power supply up until at least April this year. Michael Apple, Johannesburg. President Cyril Ramaphosa is coming back uh, to the country today, partner, as we've reported earlier. He's expecting a full report from ESCOM. Well, as you've just seen in Michael Apple's report, his investment drive is under threat. There's a risk here for the country's economy as long as ESCOM's woes continue. Just a short while ago, I sent a WhatsApp message to Kulupasiwe to check whether or not there are other three of the, or the remaining three of the seven affected power stations are already back on stream. And here is his response. I'm just going to read it quickly for our viewers. Morning, sir. We are awaiting feedback from the system operator in due course. We'll keep you posted. So we wait to find out whether or not all seven power stations that were affected that caused the fourth stage of load shedding yesterday will be back on stream. Four are already back on stream. The remaining three will find out later. But at the moment, we, it seems like we're still in that danger zone in terms of power generation. The words used by our president, Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa. Back to you, partner. Right, thanks very much. So we're still not out of the woods. We might be able to avoid stage four. We'll see, but we're still Load shedding is still a reality for us. Thank you very much, my partner Dan Mayani. That comprehensive uh, update there. We'll catch up with him a little later on. He's outside Megawatt Park for us this morning. Now, Ati Mtangana out and about in Cape Town for us this morning. Ati, a very good morning to you. Uh, just describe for us where you are and, and, and you know, what you're seeing in terms of the impact of load shedding there in Cape Town. Dark times for South Africa, Uveca and Cape Town, of course, also affected by the implementation of Stage 4 yesterday, which came as a shock not only to the President, Sir Ramaphosa, but to the entire country. So as you may know, that Stage 4 is one of the worst stages of load shedding experienced by this country, similarly to what we saw uh, the country go through in 2014. But as you may know, businesses were affected by the stage four implementation of load shedding, as well as residential areas and traffic lights. But by the look of things behind me, where we are at a very busy intersection, about 20 kilometers from the Kubek power station, it looks like all systems are running with your traffic lights operational. But that was not the case yesterday when some traffic lights were affected, causing major traffic congestion in parts of Cape Town. Now, I have with me a resident from Cape Town who's going to give his reaction to uh, the implementation of Stage 4. And he's actually someone who works for a security company. And I'm going to ask him how you as a security company responded to some calls during the implementation of Stage 4. Okay, I think it, look, it makes it a lot, a lot uh, more difficult because you've got a lot of alarms that are going off. Um, when there's a power failure, it goes on to battery mode, and with the stage, um, with the stage four and ongoing power cuts, um, the batteries don't get enough chance to charge, so they don't fully charge. And as it goes on, eventually they won't charge at all. So you'll have complete cut off of a system of a of a uh, alarm system. Um, another thing too is the traffic. When the traffic is heavy and the robots out and you've got to respond to calls, it takes a lot longer, obviously, with the traffic. 
So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's a disaster. Um, and it could have uh, very big implications should something happen, okay, to residents through crime or whatever the case might be. Speaking about crime, did you get calls relating to crime incidents? Because as you can imagine, when traffic lights are out and all lights are out, that poses a huge risk for criminal elements to loop in. Yes, that is true. Look, um, um, at this stage, we haven't had uh, much extra crime or extra incidents happening. Um, just the normal incidents that normally happen, but that is a huge problem and it's a big concern um, because clearly when it's darker and lights are out and people haven't got alarms, they are more vulnerable and the criminal element know that. And now let's talk about the residential areas that were obviously affected by stage four of load shedding and how you responded as a security company. Did they say anything about their home appliances? Because we understand some of them had to rush home to make sure that all their home appliances are switched off so that they don't get affected by stage four of load shedding. No, look, I think stage four load shedding was a bit of a shock. It came to everybody all of a sudden like that. Nobody knew exactly when the power cuts were going to happen. Um, and I can't speak for the company as a whole because I worked nights and I was sleeping in the daytime so I didn't know about this uh, implementation of stage 4. But I'm sure it does have an effect. Um, my, not with my colleagues or any of us, I haven't heard anything at this stage, but definitely it will have an effect. And just your views now as a resident in Cape Town about how you feel about the implementation of Stage 4, although things are much calmer this morning, just your views as a, as a ratepayer who experiences load shedding like the rest of the country? It's a disaster, and a disaster that should never have happened in the first place. With proper planning, proper implementation, nothing else like this would have happened. Um, I just feel that the general public could be more enlightened and given the correct details of when load shedding will occur and um, because residents are finding it very difficult to actually get um, the knowledge to know exactly when these cuts are going to happen. I know obviously with stage two going to stage four it's a bit of a, a quick decision but they've got to do a system that allows us to, to access a something with Eskom or something uh, on the internet that will tell us exactly when those cuts are going to happen. Right, thank you very much. A resident from Cape Town who works for a security company expressing his views on the implementation of Stage 4 yesterday saying that if Eskom could be much clearer and communicate to South Africans when exactly they'll be implementing implementing rather the different stages of load shedding that would bring about much relief to the many residents who do get affected by load shedding. I think the question is, and, and that's the sentiment being expressed, Ati, is that many people, uh, the question out there is, do we actually believe what Eskom is telling us? Do we trust the information coming from them? But thank you very much for that. It's uh, nice to hear how people on the ground are dealing with this. Atim Tungana, she's out and about in Cape Town assessing the impact of load shedding.